Syracuse in the home white, Virginia in the road blue and orange. We are underway in the dome. A top six matchup in the ACC. And it's the orange who dig out the opening face off and set up shot for the Syracuse team that comes in 10 and four. Three of those four losses in overtime. And Paul in goal for Virginia. Matthew Nunes returns in between the pipes. He was. And Virginia digs out the face off. Syracuse still scrambling for the ball. The energy on these ground balls to start the game, something you'd expect in a Virginia-Syracuse game. Virginia's the best team nationally in ground balls per game. Syracuse has an advantage on the face-off X, but if it becomes a 50-50 scream All-American in school history, he's the leading point scorer, and he did it in less games than everyone else in the top five. He's a national championship weekend MVP. Uh, how do you argue it? if we had a stat face-offs one and face-offs one that led to a possession because the player who's winning the initial clack crowd to life for this open quarter this is a big day in the dome spring football later on tonight the people in central new york this is in spending time here as a student athlete and you went to school here syracuse athletics this is their pro team the community rallies behind the sports here and it's an incredible, actually, few days at Syracuse. Thoughts and prayers with the family of both those fallen officers who died tragically way too young in the line of duty. Midway through this first quarter, Paul Carcaterra, Jay Alter with you. And again, a face-off win that really shouldn't go down as one because the other team's going to have the ball. If you can't possess it, this guy's shooting warm-ups. He can let it fly. And the problem for Syracuse is if you move off where, <laughs> who's he giving yeah. it to? He's giving it to Cormier Schellenberg, who finds yeah. Cormier on the backside. <laughs> to shoot that right out of that roll. A long clamp here, Anthony Gobriel and Mason Cohn. It's been a good face-off battle all afternoon, and Syracuse wins it, Sam Alexo. And the Orange settle it down. That's a big spot for that young buck. Wearing the number 19. That at halftime will go into the rafters, a number very important to Syracuse lacrosse and Hoddle, the freshman. What a time to score his first goal. Cone won the faceoff. He's not shy to go right to goal. He's so athletic and he's a really strong offensive player, as is Johnny Mullins. Well, guess what, Pops? You did well. Paying off on a big stage. The sophomore ties it at four, two goals at 31 seconds for the Orange. About 25 seconds remaining here at the end of the first quarter. Something about this matchup, Kark, it always delivers Syracuse of Virginia. Millen. Because resume-wise, they didn't have that big signature win. They beat Denver, but you wanted to see more than just one big win for the Blue Devils to put them in that top four, and they got that last week. And it's the way they beat Virginia, right? They manhandled them. 18 to 12 left, no doubt. And now Virginia trying to respond on the road. After a loss since 2017, Lars Tiffany of this program are 20 wins, zero loss. How many of these goals were four shots? None, None of them. them. None of them. And it's the same case a week ago against Duke. There weren't but he just wasn't making that big save that the team needed. 
So Lars Tiffany made the switch last week to Kyle Morris. Will he do it again? Ready to shoot and score. Because there's so many scrums in the middle of the field, Jay. Much needed face-off win for Virginia. Cormier can't cash in. Will Mark got in front of it. Because there's so many scrums in the middle of the field, Jay. Much needed face-off win for Virginia. Cormier can't cash in. Will Mark got in front of it. And now Syracuse pushes the other way. This chaotic pace continues. Virginia has not scored. The cross looked one way when they left looked another and they're the first real celebrities I think in the sport like to the point where they were four or five years removed from playing at Syracuse when I was a freshman and if I saw them like I was almost like starstruck and you know me I'm not lost for words with anyone but to be around the gates and their presence but then when you get to know them how humble they are and how kind and, and, and gentle souls they are they're, they're amazing people forward-thinking you have to make him make a decision in that time it shuts makes the orange pay the big development here though is does Lars Tiffany stick with Matthew Nunes he's still sitting on zero saves he had zero saves when he was pulled last week against Duke seven goals allowed I'm not seeing Kyle real start in the real warm-up but he didn't stand on his head last week you know if he had Kyle Morris in relief a week ago and he played amazing I, I think he'd be in this game already mm -hmm. And 23 man up goals now for Syracuse leads all Division One. Another long scrum for the faceoff. Foul called against the Orange, so it goes Virginia's way. No concern with supporting the matchup in sliding. Cone wins it cleanly. And a save made by Matthew Nunes, his first in two weeks. Great pass, Schellenberger, Cormier! That's a hat trick for Peyton Cormier and Schellenberger, back to back, beautiful assists. When we were talking about the ability of Matthew Nunes and who he brings to the this is an easy save right to a stick. But what he does is he triggers transition. He's such a good passing goalie that it allows the Cavaliers to play in space, to play with tempo, to play fast and furious. And that's what you have with Matthew Nunes. And when he makes that stop, your offense just clicks at a different level. When he's not making the stops, you don't see the transition. What about the placement, too, by Cormier? We've seen a lot of low shots by Cormier, but that time on a, on a right-handed goalie to hit the near pipe. And that's not good. Schellenberger's on the bench right now. You see them, looks like they're working on his, his upper body somewhere. So Schellenberger with two assists in 19 seconds. The catalyst for Virginia and the Cavaliers back within one. John Mullen, the freshman into the game, wins his first faceoff. And we'll try a decision by Heltz, who's been feeling pretty good. He could yeah, his have IQ, that fly. His IQ is his next level. Sees through a defense and just understands when to push, when not to. And he's not a pulled out type dodger, but. four-time first-team All-American. And he was a first-team All-American his freshman year as a midfielder. And it pays dividends late in his career, sweeping across the top of the Syracuse defense on the run. That is a mini dodge through and through. And he's so versatile. The response in 13 seconds. But what I love about Kevin Cassis in the offense that he employs with the Cavaliers is moving Schellenberger around because you know about his versatility. He could beat you up top. You've seen him feeding from behind, dodging from behind, spraying it up top. He's the ultimate, ultimate.
offensive weapon. And now the first ever Virginia Cavalier with 300 career points. And I mentioned earlier, he broke the record in less games than everyone else in the top five. Everyone thinks, oh, the COVID year. He was redshirting that year. He did not play one game in 2020. So those are, are real points, the points per game record. 18 goals with four minutes left. We're going to need oxygen. <laughs> I asked Virginia head coach Lars Tiffany, is this the best rivalry in the sport? He goes, it's certainly the most exciting. It is. A lot of people think Maryland Hopkins because of how long it existed. You know, Syracuse, Virginia didn't start playing again in the regular season to nine plays in this game. And, and that's the beautiful thing. They're going to have to use their instincts, their awareness, and their ability to press in transition. I think the transition play of both teams and the pick game. We haven't seen Syracuse give the ball to Joey Spelina behind the cage. Hardly at all. Right? He, he's your offensive. So it's interesting. They're running Millen right now as a midfielder. Jack Boyden, the tough transfer, who is a wizard with his stick, is now playing attack on the bottom right-hand side. So Millen coming out of the box. You saw it right out of the gates. He used his speed with, like, one of those Schellenberger up top dodges, and it makes you think that midfield might be an option for him as well. Three goals, two assists. And we are all tied at 10 in a game that seemingly is going to come back to the last minute. John Mullen, clean face-off win. He's lucky the ball actually continued past the cage for the backup. And there is a lot of lacrosse left in this game. Can't be tired now. 9.33 to go in the third quarter. A rivalry that seemingly always delivers an explosive, exciting matchup. He's writing another one. Back-to-back -back goals! Jake Stevens buries it! Two goals in 13 seconds for Syracuse. This is what Mason Cohn can do for you. Plays the whistle. Stevens, I mentioned, with English play, a lot of reps. But when you have a wing guy that you can keep on for instant offense, he's not racing to get off the field, Jay. He's staying on the field for offense. And we've talked a lot about Hiltz as a goal scorer, the awareness as a passer. From 77 and white, Owen Hiltz. That's Gobriel, the faceoff man. That's a concerning... Visual. It's, oh, so it's Colucci, uh, Colucci, 81. So they have a two-headed monster with Gobriel and Colucci, a lot like Syracuse does. And the beauty of that is depending on style, who do you use? It's the left leg. Ooh, yeah. Uh, you saw something with the left leg possibly give out a little bit. You hope he's okay. You know, he's had to play a lot of lacrosse because Gobriel has been nicked up himself this year. So Colucci has played a, a ton of reps. He's becoming an experienced face-off guy. For Lars Tiffany, now you're, you're down to one. You, you just have Gobriel for the moment, at least. And, and you're right. He came into today not 100%. No. He, he's battling through it like a lot of face-off guys are they this all time do. of the year. I mean, the, the, the taxing rigors of that position Found a lot better than an american-born player because of the second chances wow that went off of, of stevens's body i thought originally noons made the stop ouch <laughs> did you give stevens the assist <laughs> uh, he's got something to show for it wow yeah bruce syracuse three straight goals in this third quarter two of them belong to finn thompson John Mullen, the freshman, has come in and been terrific 
at the face-off X. Well, well, that's what the two-headed monster gives you, right? You have Mason Cohn, you have Johnny Mullins. Now you're playing against just high-powered offense against high-powered offense. You know, the way Lars Tiffany and Gary Gate coach, they empower their team with so much freedom on the offensive end, and we have seen that. Both teams taking full advantage. This has been so much fun to watch. Syracuse, they've won five. Lucci's back. 81 in blue. I, I thought he was done for the day. A warrior going against Mason Cohn. Flying in off the wing, Matt Wright wins it for Syracuse. They have dominated the faceoff exit. Ship in Canada from the age of 12 to 18. Nobody knew about us because we were from the West Coast. The West Coast teams didn't weren't known to be good teams. Yep. So that was it. He called us and and said, "Would you, without seeing us, said, would you guys like to come to Syracuse to play lacrosse?" And we were like, "What? <laughs> okay." You know, because we had aspirations of playing at, Syracuse, or at a school like Syracuse or playing rugby or basketball in Canada. And when yeah. he called from the U.S., everybody wants to be American. Well, guess what? As a result, when no one was recruiting Canadians, now every college coach in the country is. And Virginia just got a goal from a Canadian named Peyton Cormier. And the style, the Canadian flair, and the way that you handle your sticks. Where was that in terms of the foundation? Where did you and Gary find that way of playing? Because it was well, different. We could not take the credit. I have to be honest. We learned to play by emulating the players that were out senior men when we were kids, like you said. Yeah. When you were in middle school, you watched us. When we were in middle school, we watched guys like Ron Neal and Jack Beyond, and those guys were truly innovators in the Canadian game. And they're the ones that threw the behind the backs and stuff. Gary and I just evolved it and adapted it to the field lacrosse game. Yeah, you took it to a completely different level, and the game is, has changed. The rules have changed because of your forward thinking as a player. I want it to be felt on the manufacturing side. Gary and I have worked for competing companies for most of my career. I've been manufacturing lacrosse equipment since 94, and he worked for STX for 30 years. Yeah. And I always worked for someone else and competed against them. And let me makes, and he's almost like a step ahead, Jay. He realizes that, okay, I have a shorty on me. I don't have to score. I'm going to make the defense think I'm going so they have to slide. So I almost think he uses the, the short stick sometimes as a decoy to set up his passes. In, in the pantheon of Syracuse, it, it's tough. Gary and Paul are, are the best of all time at yep. the midfield position, not even just in Syracuse respect, but globally. Roy Colsey is a top five midfielder ever at Syracuse, but there's a flag down. Well, Gobriel took a big hit. Schellenberger scored the goal and put it in the back of the net. The whistle and the timing of the whistle right. is interesting here. Because Gobriel took the hit. I think the officials threw the flag. Will the goal stand? Is I the think question. they blew a whistle prior to Schellenberger scoring. The timing of this. This game is moving so fast. Yep. If Schellenberger's goal stands, it's two goals in six seconds for Virginia. But did the whistle blow before Schellenberger released it? Now, Gary Gates said to the officiating crew, it's not even close. Is that in reference to, I think he's talking about the Billy Dwan hit. So, Gobriel comes down, wins the faceoff, watch 35, slides. That's to the head. Now, the way that the game is being played and how fast it's happening, is it, you know, that's not to the head. Gobriel doesn't slip, though. Right. Like, he's falling down prior to the hit. If he's standing up here, there's no malicious intent here. This is this is not to the head. You see how low he is, and then Gobriel slips here. 
he slips actually before the contact. Like a, a, a fraction of a second before the contact. This is going to be interesting. The goal stands, and they're calling it a two minute, so there's an egregious element to this hit. I'm good with one minute, not with two here. After review, we got 35 white, two minutes, contact ahead, off in. They still have plenty of time on the extra man with 41 seconds left. It's the freshman John Mullen for Syracuse. Oh, they got a hold. They got a hold. Face off. Hold on Gobriel there. So the Orange will look to kill this man up another 33 seconds. Virginia has. This will go Virginia's way. Face-off violation called against Mason Cohn. Cavaliers a two-goal lead. And this is a problem for Syracuse. The advantage overall in the game, the face-offs, but not the critical ones here in the second half. The latest one makes it a one-goal game. Back to the face-off X. Syracuse goes with a freshman Mullen. Going against Anthony Gobriel. Ball still loose. And Syracuse has it with Spalina. Spalina was so smart there to just get the ball and get rid of it because that was a traffic jam in there. Cross here when that goal went in. 4 nothing run for the Orange over the last 642. Virginia has gone scoreless down the stretch. Can the Cavaliers find a goal here in the final? 40 seconds. Lars Tiffany takes a timeout. Anthony Gobriel has given Virginia an opportunity to tie this game at eight.